Welcome back to another episode of the Chicago White Sox March to October. Things have been going pretty good lately. If you look at our little graph thing there, we've been moving up a lot lately. We've been getting a lot of wins. Our division though, the Indians and Twins, they've been just as good and they've been holding me back. But right now, we have a chance to do something about it. We're in the middle of a four game series against the Twins. Already took game one. And this next moment is going to be in the middle of game two. So right now, as you can see, we're two and a half games back of the Twins in the division. We're three games back in terms of projected wins. But this, this key moment right here, this might be the biggest one of the year so far. If we can manage to win this game, our fireball stays quite large and we might be able to complete the sweep on them in the series. And that would at least move us past the Twins. And then depending on how the Indians do, we could move past them too. So there's not much else to go through. We're just going to go right ahead and get into, like what I said, the biggest moment of the year so far. And we're in a heated contest between two division rivals, one of whom is happily nested at the top of the standings, and the other one is looking to shake the tree a bit. Matt, listen, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best, right? These are the games where a team who's trying to come out on top of the pack can get a leg up. And of course, if you're on top, this is a prime opportunity to keep them away. Here's Miguel Sano. So they pretty much said exactly what I was saying. We're trying to assert ourselves in this division, trying to gain some ground on the Twins. It's a very tight race at the top. All three of the top teams are doing really good. We got Rodone on the mound. They've got a runner on first, nobody out, and Sano at the plate. Sano's always dangerous. Man, we don't want to lose him here. We had him down 0-2, and then he decided to have the best eye he's had his whole career, and then he... Oh, I I don't like Sano. That's, that's a really frustrating way to start. <laughs> like I said, we had him down 0-2, and then he all of a sudden decides to have the best eye he's ever had, and then just destroys that ball and now what is this a rain delay you couldn't have given me the rain delay before Miguel Sano hit that home run we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a new pitcher <laughs> especially since since our boy Rodone just gave that up I think we're gonna go with C-Sheck see you C-Sheck coming in 5.53 ERA but honestly that means he's been doing pretty good for like probably the last half of the season so far because he started out doing really bad he was at like a 10 plus era all right that's how okay actually not how i wanted to start oh danny danny what are we gonna do about you man that's two errors in the last two games over there at second base you're supposed to be somebody who can actually feel a little bit on this team all right, can we? We're probably not going to turn two on this because it's Buxton. But hey, at least we get that lead runner. This one, this better be two. All right, good. Nothing botched that time. We get out of the inning, but not before disaster happens. I don't even know what that was. We give up a home run and then a rain delay. We got a lot in front of us. It looks like they went with their starter to stay in the game after that rain delay. I don't know how that affects things, but uh, it looks like he has plenty of energy and confidence, so I guess it really doesn't affect things. I'm looking at this scoreboard out there in left field. Jose Barrios is 14-3 and on the season. Oh, that was a home run pitch. 14-3 and on the season with a 3.02 ERA. This dude is killing it this year. That's got to drop. Oh, no, it's Buxton. Nothing's dropping in center field with Buxton. There we go. This time a three and two count leads to a walk. Would have been nice if we could have let off with that. Really, we're gonna we're gonna do the the high and in slurve. When does that pitch ever work in real life? That's gonna get caught. Oh my god. Oh my. <laughs> what even? What even am I doing right now, man? What am I playing? This isn't baseball. Is that going to do anything? Nope, because it's Buxton. Of course it's not going to do anything. 
Dude literally threw four hanging slurves in a row. The first three I was early on, and then that one I'm just under, and Buxton crashes into the wall. Oh my god. What is with all these Twins hitters with low vision taking pitches on an 0-2 count in order to get a pitch to hit a home run on? Why was that hung? I don't, I don't, oh, this, this game's over. Why, why did this have to happen in this game of all games? There we go. Freezing him on the sinker. <laughs> of all pitches, I'm throwing nasty sliders below the zone that they're either fouling off or taking. And then it's the sinker that I leave right over the middle that gets him. All right, we're out of the inning. Two innings to go. Hey, if they can score four runs in two innings, so can I. That's got to leave, right? That's got to leave, right? Finally, Yohan Mankata doing something on this March to October, turning on that Barrios fastball for a leadoff home run. First pitch of the inning. That's probably going to knock him out of the game. That was like 110 pitches. No, they're going to keep him in. All right, let's 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 try and put up some more off of him. Tim Anderson, that has to get down too. That's going to be a double. Tim Anderson, the doubles king of the year so far. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure he's still on top in the league. All right, that double is what's going to knock Barrios out of the game. I don't, I can't remember who they have in the bullpen besides Taylor Rogers and Trevor May. So I don't know who we're going to see. Looks like it's going to be Trevor May. All right, he's pretty good. We got a uh, we got a little bit of work cut out for us. Oh, look at Eloy. I didn't even know if I meant to swing on that cuz that was up above the zone and then all of a sudden he's flipping his bat and hitting it 411 feet. Eloy Jimenez might be the best part, the he, no, not even might be, he is the best part of this March to October so far. This dude is insane. And just like that, we're only one run behind with still nobody out in the inning. Oh, and uh, Edwin can't keep it going. Never mind, run. He's safe. Oh, the bad throw. Edwin was jogging and he still made it there. We're still going with nobody out. Oh, man. I just missed that with the Brayu. That would have been the lead. Hey, that's only one out, though. And we have Mazzara against the righty now. He could put one over the wall, too. Oh, don't tell me he actually did. That one's getting down. Is it getting out? Oh, my God. What an inning. And I called it. Nomar Mazzara with the two-run home run. To cap off the five-run comeback in the bottom of the eighth, we take the lead, and now we have to hold it for the save. Oh, and Grandal's now smacking that one to center. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. More insurance. I'll take it, man. Yasmani Grandal also waking up. That's Moncada and Grandal both hitting home runs this inning. Both guys I've been struggling with. This is the most insane game I've played of March to October yet this season. I've given up two home runs, and now I've hit four home runs in one inning. Oh, don't tell me even Danny's doing it. A perfect fly ball to center. Oh! <laughs> oh, Danny. I'm sorry, man. You're not quite ready to take anybody deep to center yet. And with it now being a safe situation... Who else to bring in but our new closer, Michael Givens? And you might be thinking, why aren't you bringing in Ken Giles? You just traded for him too. But like I said, in that same video when I traded for him, Michael Givens having a crazy good season. And I didn't want to give the closer role to, to Giles yet just because of how good Givens is doing. So I hope, I hope Givens keeps it going and doesn't blow it here. And the slider gets no swinging. That's one down. All right. I think that was the 10th pitch of the at-bat after a ton of foul balls. Leary camping under the ball, and that's the second out. Dude, these twins are giving me as much trouble 
as I can handle right now. The, the eye on these plays. This is the third batter of the inning, and that was pitch 21. And he doesn't swing. The fastball up and in freezes him. We get three fireballs for that win. Way to finish strong. I, f I feel like we should get some bonus ones for hitting four home runs in the same inning to come back from down 5-1 to one to winning that game 7-5. to five. That was the biggest game of the season, and we really came to play. C-Shack getting the win for that one, even though I don't know if he deserves it. Michael Givens with the save, 26 on the year. Moncada and Grandal finally waking up. Eloy continuing his dominance. And okay, I get I got a pack. Let's let's get that screen away. All right. I want to sweep the twins. We have to sweep the twins. That would be huge. Come on, simulation. Give me these wins. No. Oh, we all right. All right. Sweeping the Tigers. Another trade? What? All right, boys. I think this might be the first trade that I pass up on. And you might be thinking I'm crazy because this is easily the best pool of players that I've had pop up. It's the final opportunity we're going to have to trade because at the top of the screen it says one day until trade deadline. But here's here's the thing. I am I am pretty much set on turning this March to October into a franchise mode after the season is over. So with that in mind, I do have to kind of keep track of uh, not trading away some of our best young guys. If this was strictly a March to October, then I'd probably be trading for either Yates or Bauer, like without even thinking about it. But because I want to turn this into a franchise, I don't know if I can do this deal for Yates because we'll be giving up Andrew Vaughn and Luis Basabe. I know that Luis Basabe guy, I put him on the trade block because he was basically Luis Robert too. Um, he just wasn't quite as good. But uh, I don't know what the package with Andrew Vaughn too. Andrew Vaughn is going to be the future first baseman, especially with Edwin and Abreu starting to get up there in age. Andrew Vaughn's going to need to... Uh, we, we don't really have time... If we're thinking about this in a franchise, we don't really have time to get another young first baseman and try and develop him. So I don't think the trade for Yates is going to be on the table. And then the deal for Bauer, I don't think I can do for a different reason. Now, here's the thing. I don't, I wouldn't normally care about giving up either Zach Collins or James McCann. But if it wasn't for the fact that this trade would be giving up both of our backup catchers, I probably would do it, even if it was Zach Collins, but I just, I don't think I can, I can give up both of our backup catchers without like some sort of plan in place, because I don't know what the game will let me do. I don't know if the game's AI will realize, oh, you just got rid of both of your backup catchers. Let, let's call up a catcher. I don't know. I don't really trust the game to do that. I feel like, I feel like we'd kind of. It wouldn't let me do anything, and then we'd be stuck without a backup catcher for the rest of the year. And backup catchers are pretty important. And then even this Knable trade, I'm, I wouldn't be too... I don't know. I mean, both these guys could be solid. Nicky Delmonico, he's... I mean, he's on the older side. He's not as good. So I, I wouldn't be too upset about losing him. But this Connor Pilkington, I'm going to go with, he looks like he could be solid as a, as a future reliever. I mean, he's a lefty. Uh, he's got a slider, which is always nice to have on a lefty, and he's pretty young, so I don't know what he could end up turning into, but it's not its not even my players that I'd be giving up that's preventing this trade. It's just, how many hard-throwing righties do we need on the team in the bullpen? I mean, I guess in a sense, you can never have too many, but like, I already have Joe Kelly, Giles, Givens, Calame, and even c -Sheck. I know c -Sheck's not really as hard of a thrower as the other guys, I think. And again, I think if I did trade for Knable, the game would probably automatically send Jace Fry down again. And I don't want that. I don't want to lose another lefty like I thought I did before. I don't know. I don't think I can make a trade here. I'm not going to do it for the first time in this March to October. I'm going to decline to make a trade. I think our team's in a good spot. 
especially after making that comeback off of the Twins. And, and then after we took the lead, our bullpen being able to shut it down. I just, I don't think we need to make any changes. So I'm going to go ahead and pass up on this. It, it kind of hurts because Bauer, Yates, even Knievel, all of them could have a spot on this team and contribute and be good, probably. But I just, I, it doesn't seem logical. None of them seem logical if you think about me extending this March to October into a franchise. So I'm going to lock it in. Not interested in trade at this time. We're confident in the team we have on the field. And it is set in stone. And we take another game against the Indians. And it looks like we have a key moment to play. So the only game we lost in that simulation was one game against the Twins. And that one game would have put us tied for the division lead. So after that, our projected wins climbed to 91. I honestly would have thought it might have climbed more than just one game. I don't, I don't know. We're just going to have to go with it. We only dropped one game in that simulation. It prevented us from sweeping the Twins, but then we did sweep the Tigers. We took the first game against the Indians, and this next game against the Indians and that whole series could be just as big of a game, if not bigger, than the ones we just played against the Twins. This division race is getting real crowded at the top. All three of us within one game of each other. Well, the top two guys are tied, and I'm the one that's one game back. So we are definitely not out of anything yet, but that is where I'm going to end this episode. That was probably the best game I've played of this entire March to October yet, and we should have another good one in store for the next one. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button for me and subscribe so you can see the rest of this March to October. I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.